Welcome to this rapid revision video looking at causes of disease, specifically this time in medieval times. What did medieval people think caused illness? Well really this is a question of the church versus natural ideas, but we'll get on to that now. Supernatural versus natural ideas in the Middle Ages. Most medieval theories about the cause of illness and disease could be split between natural, such as Hippocrates and Galen, and the supernatural, such as Christianity. So what do we mean by these terms? Well, supernatural literally means beyond nature. These theories are often spiritual or religious and they rely on an element of faith. However, natural theories were based upon what could be observed in the real world, often more scientific, but not always correct. We'll now consider some examples of this, because some of it is just ghost stories really, or religion. We're gonna start with the influence of the church. The church was incredibly powerful in the Middle Ages. They owned large areas of land and they had a priest in every village, and so they dominated life from the wealthy right down to the poorest peasant. People believed everything in the Bible, especially that God caused disease. You would go to hell if you dis disagreed, which was a real fear. The church also said that Galen was right. Because they controlled education, doctors were taught this. They were particularly fond of his idea about perfect design. The idea that the body had been specifically designed by a greater power. If you're unfamiliar with Galen's work, I've got a separate video on that. Therefore, all views on the medicine were influenced by the church. And it could be very dangerous to question them. But what other religious ideas were there? Everyone was religious in the Middle Ages. The church was a core part of life. People feared God and they feared the power of the church. The Bible taught that God controlled all aspects of life, both good and bad. They used God to explain bad harvests, the death of animals. And so God sending a disease down was also an obvious explanation that many people believed. People believed that diseases were a punishment from God for their sins or possibly a way of God testing their faith. After all, it was believed that if you died and you went to heaven, you'd gone to a better place anyway, and that was all part of God's plan. Here's a quote from the Prior of Christchurch Abbey, written in 1348. God used the suffering to drive out the numberless sins of the people. If you've already got some knowledge of medicine through time, perhaps you recognize the significance of that date, 1348, the year the Black Death arrived in England. But there were other supernatural ideas too that didn't necessarily rely on Christian faith. Many people in the Middle Ages were highly superstitious too. They believed in the supernatural like witchcraft, luck and astrology. Unfortunately this also meant that minority groups such as Jewish people were blamed for poisoning wells during the Black Death. Physicians believed the alignment of the stars and planets could affect your health and cause disease as well. Before we write this off, um, it is incorrect. Let's remember that lots of people still follow their horoscopes in the newspapers even today. So perhaps medieval people believing in their own version of the horoscopes and believing in astrology isn't so far-fetched, however incorrect it is scientifically. In the 14th century, astrology was a key part of medical training and physicians and doctors used planetary movements and zodiac signs in their treatment and when recognising what they were going to get the, the patient to try out to make them better. And that meant that it wasn't just a superstition, it was something that doctors believed and it was virtually believed like science. But not everything in the Middle Ages was reliant on supernatural ideas and faith. It's important to remember that the ideas of Hippocrates and Galen were the basis of medieval physicians' trainings in the universities. But also you could add to that the Islamic doctor Ad Avicenna, that's how he was known in Latin, or Ibn Sina. He also had some influence. The church especially supported Galen's theories. They owned the libraries which re reproduced ancient texts, and they approved of Galen's idea of perfect design. The church was a centre of learning and controlled what was taught. This could be a useful thing, but physicians were also not allowed to challenge Galen and many other old ideas. That meant an awful lot of natural thinking in the Middle Ages was actually reliant, reliant on ancient thinking. One common theory of how you could diagnose disease was uroscopy or urine charts. Medieval physicians used urine charts to check for colour, thickness, smell and taste and to check for illness within urine. They linked it to the theory of the four humours, e.g. very pale urine meant that you might have too much phlegm, whereas very 
dark urine might mean you had too much blood or too much yellow bile. Uroscopy did have some uses and it actually remained the standard way of diagnosing diabetes until the 19th century. And you won't like this, but they would taste the urine. If it was sweet, then clearly there was something wrong with the way that that person processed sugars. But it was still based on a flawed idea. There were certain limitations with it. Medieval physicians had no idea that they were wrong, and no one knew what really caused disease. Also, it was only the rich who could afford to use physicians anyway, and they used the four humours. So what about ordinary people? What did they believe? A really important idea is the theory of miasma. In addition to the natural ideas of Galen and Hippocrates, miasma was an important believed cause of illness. People blamed bad stinking air called miasma for causing diseases, including things like the Black Death. People believed that bad or poisoned air made them ill, and it seemed logical to them as dirty places really stank. They didn't realise though it was the bacteria in the dirt that was doing it. As an example, King Edward III of England in the 14th century said, the filth from the houses is infecting the air with contagious sickness. They also linked this to God, saying that he caused the poisonous air to cleanse people of their sins. So even a more natural idea like this, which does make a lot of sense, would also be linked to religion. But let's not forget that miasma is, is in fact nonsense. This is not the same idea as airborne diseases like viruses and bacteria which might be breathed in. This was the idea that the air itself was somehow poisonous and corrupted. We now know that bad smells are often caused by bacteria. That does cause disease. But at this time, it was believed that the air was the problem. It's really important though. People had no understanding of germs at this time. So this seemed like a rational explanation for what was happening. Let's have a look at a few examples. So medieval people believed that illness was sent by God as a punishment for the sins of the people. One example of this was the Black Death. As a result of many people being bad, God sent us a disease to kill off the bad and some good so that everybody learns their lesson, all part of his plan. But also the devil's helpers would shoot invisible arrows at people to cause them to become ill. These invisible arrows are called elf shot. These cause illnesses such as headaches. I will say, though, that this is more of an Anglo-Saxon idea, which rather predates the 1250s. But I would not be at all surprised if some medieval people believe this. Perhaps fascinatingly, you can imagine them ploughing their fields and finding prehistoric stone arrowheads, something that they would have never had any idea of how to make. And maybe this was linked to their explanations. People have also gotten ill in their town because of the four humours being unbalanced by the noxious air. Again, nonsense, but people believed it. Then consider an outbreak of plague in 1361, which killed many children, so no another churchman said that God was punishing children who didn't respect or love their parents. Well, I can imagine that. Witches were blamed for all illnesses too, because they had put a curse on a group of people. Again, a medieval belief. And also remember they blamed the alignment of the planets. They thought that the alignment of planets in the sky, which was sometimes predictable, was believed to cause illness if it was unfavourable. So let's have a quick think. Which of these are supernatural ideas and which ones are natural? If you want to work this out for yourself, you can pause the video here. If not, we'll go through the answers now. Well, our first example, that's supernatural, linked to God's punishment. The next one, too, is supernatural, blaming the devil. The next is natural, though, linked to the theory of miasma. The next is supernatural, the idea of God's punishment again. The next is also supernatural, the idea of witches using bad magic. And the last one is also supernatural. Remember, we now understand what the planets were, or are. Medieval people did not. They simply recognised these as slightly weird stars that seem to move around in the sky, unlike the stars that seem to stay in their usual constellations. And so this is very much a supernatural idea, even if we would consider planets today quite scientific. But remember, we don't tend to think that they cause disease these days. So let's have a look at the final points. Medieval understanding of the cause of disease divided between the supernatural and the natural. Supernatural theories include the influence of the church, God's actions and punishments, evil spirits, and astrology, the motion of the stars and planets. But there are also natural theories, and these include Hippocrates, Galen, and Avicenna, the four humours, miasma, and also the use of uroscopy, which was really linked to the four humours. However, in both cases, the theories were incorrect, and actually of very little help to heal the sick. It would be a good long while before people discovered germs. 
that's the end of this video. I hope it was useful. If it is, give it a like and subscribe to the channel.